have realized from this episode that uh -huh. um i may i may have some hot takes oh, uh, shit no that what that let's not even let's not fuck around without further ado hell, hell i just that's going to be the beginning welcome everybody not to crank like and it. ranked today it's uh slashed and mashed and uh for those of you who don't know and are new Slashed and Mashed is an offshoot of our show where we normally rank band discographies, but Slashed and Mashed is one of our offshoot episode thingies where we take, usually we do like companion albums. Like if there's a, you know, use your illusion one and two, load and reload, we've done those. And then we basically take what we think are the strongest songs, put them together into one album. But we've, we're now starting to venture into the world of almost creating our own greatest hits album cranked and ranked approved greatest hits album yeah every time i say that it sounds like i'm saying greatest tits but um <laughs> and so uh you know we could do an episode on that too but uh, uh but greatest you know, tits in rock <laughs> <laughs> tad oh, doyle no I'm, I'm just no um sorry tad <laughs> i mean i got him too tad okay we're not uh uh, we're, we're we're the same. So uh, so yeah, this is this episode. We're going to be taking the three classic Ronnie James Dio vocalized uh, Black Sabbath albums. So Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, and Dehumanizer, and we're going to basically pick those apart. And if we made a best of Dio Sabbath album, this is what it's going to be. Um, yeah. So, uh, so we, you know, yeah, so we, it's, it's, it's an ordeal, but we end up coming up with that, with what I think is a pretty good, you know, selection of songs. The, the hard part, and I've been thinking about this, the hard part is going to be what the fuck do we call it? So we're going to have to keep that in the conversation for this whole thing. I have one suggestion, but it's really cheesy, but also, I also kind of like that it's really cheesy, but we'll get there later. Um, but <laughs> anyway. Old head with me as always, Eddie Sparks. Yo, that's me. So, and we, and I, I just, uh, I, I will talk about this now because I, I messaged you late last night. I was a little bit drunk, but uh, in the middle of the night, I was, I had had several beers, and my wife's like, "Babe, your DNA results came in because we did that thing where you send off your DNA and they tell you, you know, what your yeah." you know your percentage of what part of the world you your your family originated from or whatever and um she starts reading it off to me and at first it's not it's not it's literally what i thought she's like ireland scotland wales i'm like fuck yeah i i, mm -hmm. I mean the, the the long story short i'm fucking white there's literally <laughs> nothing like my wife is is mostly mexican but she has things all over the fucking world in hers yeah. mine is just Europe and America. <laughs> but um, but the interesting one was that a big chunk of it, it listed out the actual, you know, the region, and the region includes Cornwall, where yep. Mr. Eddie Sparks lives, leading me to believe even more that, that it's some kind of, of a hand of fate that brought us together. It's like, I always yeah. thought, well, he could, he could easily be my son. It's 20 years difference. And he reminds me of myself a little bit, but now I'm all like, man, we, we looked it up and like your family name isn't with mine. So we're yeah. not actually related, but you know, we're from the same pool, you know, kind of nice. So that's pretty cool. We're both uh, white as fuck. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I was really, the funny thing is, is that for many, many years, you know, my, my dad did a lot of genealogy type stuff and he would go on and on about how we were uh, some sort of part of some sort of native American tribe. Turns out that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no native American in me at all. Wow. Um, and it was funny. Like she, she's reading it to me and I'm like, well, how, what percentage African am I? And she just started busting out laughing. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, it's zero, right? It's zero. Um, anyway, so that was fun. It, you know, it's, uh, 
makes me makes me it makes me feel even more like I need to get out of America and move, you know, over. Um, I got to move over where they where they allow pit bulls, which mm. apparently is not the UK. Um, maybe I'll move to Wales. I don't know. Wales um, is, is, is Wales part of the UK? Does UK include Wales? It yeah, it, it it's like it, I think it's like they're kind of they kind of govern themselves though. They they're they're, a, they're what's known as a, a devolved government. I'm I'm told. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they're on the same island, but they kind of play by their own rules. They're kind of rogue. It kind Got of looks like that. I don't know. I just I'm you know it's becoming more and more. I mean, at this point, if if it was more affordable and easier to just move, pick up and move, we would already be gone. So, um, not that, not that, not that I 100% hate America. I just hate a lot of things about it. Um, but a lot of great music came from here, but not the music we're talking about today. This music yeah. also came from England. And, um, so yeah, we've got these three albums and you said at the beginning of the episode that you have some hot takes. The hottest take that I can make is that I went into this and I was like, all right, so we're going to take these three albums and we're going to make the absolute greatest, perfect Ronnie James Dio album. And at the end of it, I went, oh, look, they already did it. It's called Mob Rules. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, li literally there's the, – so I went through and – the fir my first listen to the three albums, I X'd out the ones that I'm like, all right, I can I can get rid of this song. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Second time around listening. Oh, and and I did and I did checks for the ones that I'm like absolutely fucking keeping. And then those became mm -hmm. double checks. And then I went through and gave checks to the all, all the ones I'm like, well, this is good, but I won't I don't necessarily, you know, if we get rid of it, that's fine, but I do like it. And literally Every single song on Mob Rules has some kind of check next to it, except for E5150, which is <laughs> not even a song. Yeah. So this is going to be a tough one because, I mean, to be fair, these are all three really strong albums. Like, yeah. it's, it, this is my favorite Dio. Like, like, sometimes I feel like I'm not a Ronnie James Dio fan because I don't really like his the Dio stuff. I like some songs, but some of them I'm like, this is too much Dungeons and Dragons and it seems kind of cheese ball. <laughs> and he's a really great singer, but I don't like the songs that much. But then I listen to these albums and I go, Oh, I 100% am a Ronnie James Dio fan because like he fucking rules on every single song on these albums. Yeah. So, so it was really tough. Um, and this is going to be a really tough thing for us to do because we're going to have to get rid of things probably I, there's a few songs that when I d gave them the double check, I went, Eddie's, Eddie's double checked this one too. I know. I know. <laughs> well, how many did we agree on? Was it, was it 12? We 10. Were 12? Oh, 10. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Cause we're, cause we're, cause we're, cause the first two albums have eight tracks and then the, or eight actual tracks. And then the last one has 10. And I was like, well, let's always just go with the longest one with 10. Okay. That makes it even, makes it even harder. You know, that's what she said, say. but 10, <laughs> 10 Dio Black Sabbath tracks. I mean, mm -hmm. if you really want to do 12, we can, but I think that we should, we don't, I don't want to go easy on us, you know? Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm definitely down for, um, you know, it, it, I'd like we've always said, we'd rather have a strong, shorter album than a long bloated one. Yeah. Uh, also want to state for the record that we know that black sabbath the dio years exists but oh. this one, yeah this one is entirely our own opinion you know we're, we're not trying to we're not trying to make a quote unquote singles collection here we're trying to create a no a, a perfect album standalone you know see that that's where there's a disconnect for me because i don't listen to compilations uh mm. very much at all like i think i own one compilation in my entire collection uh, and that is queen's greatest hits but it's only because that's a greatest hits compilation than i had when i was a kid so there's a lot yeah. of nostalgia to it so i bought i got that one on vinyl but i don't think there's i have any other greatest hits collection in uh, in, in my stuff also there's like it's like that Frampton comes alive thing. Everybody has Queen greatest hits or greatest hits too. It's yeah, always yeah. One, at least one of the two. Every house has it somewhere. Even if people don't like Queen, somehow it's there. Yeah. Came in the mail with samples of Tide. 
<laughs> Man, that was like a that was like a double Wayne's World thing together because you got Queen Bohemian Rhapsody quote yeah. from Wayne's World too. Man, we are we, there's so many Ooh. layers. Yeah. High it's quality like, multiverse level the, content right here. The the onion that is slashed and mashed, slash cranked and ranked, slash whatever. Um I guess let's just let's start let's start going um with this. So we should start with Heaven and Hell. Okay. Which um is out of the three the only album that has Bill Ward on drums. Yeah. Uh, but but for the rest of it, the lineup is is Ronnie James Dio, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and then Vinny Apice or Apice. I don't know. Mm. I went many years reading his name as Vinny Apice, and then I heard somebody say yeah. Apice, and I go, well, they're saying it weird, so that makes me feel like it's right. A <laughs> bitchy. <laughs> um, so let's just start going through, and we'll we'll start by like we normally do the ones that we match up on like definitely keep definitely get rid of those are immediately on the table yeah. or off the table and we'll see how it goes so heaven and hell from 1980 kicks off with neon nights mm -hmm. um did you want to keep this one i did some thinking and as mm -hmm. much as i love the song um i was thinking to myself I'm thinking, you know, both Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules open with a high energy, up tempo banger. Um, and I think Turn on the Night is the superior of the two. I agree. So I went for getting rid of Neon Knights, despite, okay. despite my love for it. So for Neon Knights, that was one that got a check, but not, but not a double check. Mm -hmm. But Turn, on, uh, Turn Up the Night <clears throat> has a uh, double check. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and get rid of Neon Knights because we get we only got room for 10 songs. So um, goodbye, Neon Knights. That's a fucking great song, though, man. If, yeah. if That's the thing that was so hard is that, is that <laughs> some of these songs are so good that I'm just like, wow, man, they really like one up themselves from one album to the next in this case. Yeah. Um, all right. Children of the Sea. Uh, keep it or no? Now, I was thinking to myself with this song, I was listening to it, and it's kind of one of those songs that I always forget how good it is, you know, where I'm like, ah, oh, this is a slow one. It's weird mm -hmm. to have a slow one it, it sequenced as the second track. That always kind of throws me off guard after an up-tempo one. But yeah. then when that riff goes... Yeah, yeah, it's really good. But with that it's also i'm i'm not keeping this one either because, <laughs> and, and and again it's testament to the ruthless quality of of this stuff but i think i'm pretty sure when we did our black sabbath ranking from ages ago i think heaven and hell was my least favorite of the three dio albums i think so, it, uh, i think i think me too i think it, yeah. it i think it, it, it i mean looking at it right now it is my least favorite of the dio mm sabbath albums but it's still so, really so, good though but so not keeping children of the sea mm -hmm. um okay yeah i just have one check next to that um i'm gonna leave that there for now because i don't know what's gonna happen because mm. that that at least has a badass riff if we find ourselves stuck because we didn't even talk about how many songs from each album we're gonna keep and i say we don't if it ends up being majority mob rules that's just that's how the cookie crumbles as they say <laughs> um so next up, we have the first one that I X'd out, and that's Lady Evil. So did you? Uh, no, Lady here's Evil. The first, here's the first, like, big disagree. I fucking love Lady Evil. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's pretty. Lady Evil, Evil. She's a magical, mystical woman. I mean, it's good, but it's like. For some reason, in between Children of the Sea and Heaven and Hell, this song seems real silly. <laughs> yeah, although I'll, I will say as well, I love that little uh, Cliff Richard reference with that riff that obviously sounds like Devil Woman. That like little bridge oh. riff. You, you ever notice that? No, because I don't. I don't know that song well enough to even catch that. Cause yeah, it's it, as we've talked about before. Cliff Richard is not popular over here, even in the slightest. Yeah, and like I'm not. A, a massive fan but i i always picked up on that i was like devil woman lady evil 
this riff sounds very similar to that one. And like, it's just a little tease. He only plays it like once or twice as yeah. like a little turnaround bridgey sort of part. But yeah, I've always loved Lady Evil. That's one that when it comes on in the car, <clears throat> the volume knob goes whoop. Okay, so that one is is still in the running, but not a definite. Um, okay. Heaven, Heaven and Hell. Um, this one only. This one has a. I'm fine with it, but it's not to me. It to me, it's not a double check absolutely song. Hmm. See, for for me, I don't know, man. This one's this one's kind of an epic. You know, the getting the the crowd interaction with it too, like the whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cool parts in it, and it was in GTA 4. <laughs> okay. So, man, this is going to be really hard. Uh, uh, so, Heaven and Hell still in the running. Um, wishing Well, I also X'd this one out. Wishing Well yeah. can go for me. Wishing Well can wishing well can go. All right, cool. When that, when another one we, got in, we took care of. Wishing Well has, is not going on our 10 songs thing. Um, so now the only song on the album that got a double check for me, Die Young. I 100% love this song. Absolutely. Fucking double check that shit. Hell yeah. Scary. All right. I'm writing, I'm writing it over here. Die Young is the first one that gets included in our, uh, well, it might get included, but it's the first one that's being moved over to the playing field. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next two have X's for me. Walk away and lonely is the word. Both not bad songs, but I did the same thing as you. I'm like, oh, so these are a little bit slower, but skip forward one year and you have falling off the edge of the world and over and over. There's yeah. a huge difference in songs for me with between pretty those. much. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm in agreement. Walk away and lonely is the word. Can also. Uh... Bye bye. <laughs> All right. So from that album, Die Young is definitely staying, but still in the running if we need them. Children of the Sea, Lady Evil, and Heaven and Hell. So we'll we'll discuss those when we come back to them. Um, moving on to 1981 with Mob Rules, which. <laughs> yeah, it's just a Which bunch of checks. Double check all the way through. <laughs> no, there's one, two, three. There, no, there's only four double checks, but all the rest of them got checks because I couldn't X. I was like, no, none of these, are, except for E5150. I'm like, that's not a song, really. So it's like, you know, it's fine. Yeah. So Turn Up the Night got a double check for me. Me also. Okay, so that's going on here. Turn Up the Night. Night. Cool. All right, so that one, that was easy. Um, Voodoo, that one just got one check for me, but I like that one. That one's uh, that one's hit or miss for me. Um, I could take or leave. Okay. In in, in this context, it's yeah. a great song. Okay. Yeah. Um, next up, the sign of the Southern Cross. That also got one check for me. That's a double check for me. I fucking love that song. Okay. Okay. Well, that one. Um, let's see. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I want to. That- that riff might be the mightiest thing I'd ever heard at that It's point. a fucking great song. I just had to like, I really had to be realistic <laughs> with the yeah. songs that I really wanted to keep. Um, all right. So that's still in the running. E5150, I got rid of. I'm assuming mm-hmm. you did too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it should kick off the album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mob Rules double checked for me. Uh, that's That's one for me where I was like, I'm trying to be fair to all the albums. Oh no! So way, I was man. like, I, I was like thinking to myself, ah shit, ah fuck. See, my the thing is, I love Dehumanizer like the way you love Mob Rules. So yeah. it's like for me, it's that thing of Heaven and Hell is kind of the outlier where it's like, yeah, it's got some bangers. Whereas these two, it's like, ah fuck, ah. <laughs> my, Mob Rules to me is one of those tracks that immediately can turn any meh or bad night into a good one like that song just comes on i'm just like holy just the beginning of it and i'm just like nope i I feel so much better now um but we'll hold on to that one since you weren't 100 percent on it Uh, did you did you want to get rid of mob rules or were you just kind of on the fence about it this is i'm on the fence with mob rules all right uh next up 
Country Girl only has one check from me, but I, I like I it. Used to- I like it too. I used to like it a lot more, and now I'm like, I'm of the mindset. I had to get over my, my like riff adoration because like I have this problem where I think to myself, that song's got a great riff. It's a great song, but listening to it in context to the rest of the album, I thought to myself, one great riff does not a, an excellent song make. It's still yeah. great, yeah. But if I'm being fair to the high quality stuff on every album it it had to stay out of the running as, okay. as much as it crushed me because i love that fell in love with a country girl morning sunshine he's the only motherfucker that can make fell in love with a country girl <laughs> morning sunshine sound badass yeah that um, could be a john denver lyric you know <laughs> yeah so we we can we can just get rid of that one because i will i was neither here nor there on it but we we need to make room uh slipping away double check for me i love slipping away i'm going for slipping away too that one cool. that one's great and that's one of those ones that i forgot how good it is you know i was listening yeah. to it in the car and it's like that thing that you mentioned about mob rules your mood immediately just goes oh hell yeah yeah you know? yeah to be fair to me it's all of mob rules for me but um slipping yeah. away gets moved <laughs> over onto the playing field um, so in this case, it, the album ends with two, what I think are two fantastic songs, but I had to mm-hmm. choose which one of the two I liked more to get the double check. So mm-hmm. falling off the edge of the world gets a check over and over gets a double check for me. Cause it's got what I think is the greatest Tony Iommi guitar solo period. Like mm. I feel that shit in my soul in that, in that part of the song. Um, so it gets double checked for me. So what about what about you for those two? Funnily enough, I went for falling off the edge of the world because that the way that song moves and the way it kicks up with that riff, yeah, it's just every time that comes on, I think to myself, oh, that's almost like a like a Megadeth style time shift up to a faster riff, you know? Yeah, still still very much Sabbath, but but yeah, so that's. That's kind of up in the air right now. Then those two, like I, last two songs. I, yeah, there. I mean, I love both of them. So they, you know, we'll discuss those later. Um, okay. All right. So, so that's uh, that's the end of Mob Rules. We we only kept we kept Turn Up the Night and Slipping Away. Uh, we got rid of uh, Fifty One Fifty um, and Country Girl. Um, so moving on to Eddie's favorite, Dehumanizer from nineteen ninety two which is like, you know, 10 years later, but the same, the mob rules lineup. Hmm. And it honestly just sounds like not a day has gone past and they just got, I don't know. What do you think dehumanizer, the production of that is better than mob rules? Cause I go back and forth on which one I like the sound of more. To me, dehumanizer feels like production wise. What, um, Creatures of the Night is to 70s Kiss albums, you know, where it's like yeah. 10 years have passed ish and holy fuck, this, the drum sound is great. Like it's got a really big. Yeah. They're both re- they're both real beefy sounds. Yeah. And, I, and I like that. Um, I wish more bands would go for this sound. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know why this kind of sound is just been tossed away, but um, because it's, the, I, it's I, the best. I think it's because I don't know. I think I think as music became more reliant on low end, I think a lot of people lost love for the atmosphere of the music and more just want in your face, boom, 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 like sort of pounding you with the bass. But yeah. you know, I like. I like my rock and metal mixes to have some like room to them. Like, yeah. I like I like low end, but what, I think it's he, entirely possible to achieve low end and space. You know? Yeah. Well, in in these particular cases, like I like the fact that the kick drum sounds fucking huge, whereas mm. modern production, the kick drum sounds little, but it's like beating you in the head. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, that is unnecessary. What is the, what, why is that the sound everyone's going for? And I know, I know why. I feel like Bashuga ruined it for everybody. That's what it is. Every, everyone's, <laughs> everyone's trying to get that. Everyone's like, well, yeah. you got to have it real clear and, and, and clicky to go along with the, with the chuggies. And I'm like, you don't need that all the time. Come on. Yeah. Like let 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 Meshuggah do their thing, and the 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 thing that I find with like you know modern rock production is like everybody. I mean, if you look at like a like a modern Motley Crue album, where it was like, oh hey, you know we're gonna write some you know hard rock songs, but we're gonna try and sound like uh, a more contemporary act. No, no. And it just sounds like demos. <laughs> yeah, it, at, at that at that point, it's like no. It, at this stage with like i i've noticed an improvement with it where bands now are starting to get a little more echo and and space in the music again um, yeah with but i feel you know? but i feel like the problem with a lot of them and i like some of these albums that are incorporating a lot more reverb but i almost feel like i can tell it's digital reverb they're they're yeah. not they're not recording in a big room and allowing the room mics to pick up reverb it's literally just oh we're gonna we're gonna raise the reverb dial and yeah. i'm like but i can hear that that that's what they did and i'm like if i so i mean if i was in, in a band that had any kind of money whatsoever i would literally just be like oh yeah we're gonna record the drums in that big fucking room with mics way up in the corners and then guess what we're recording the vocals in that room too <laughs> and i'm yeah. you know it's like, uh, and then, you know, take the best of whatever, whatever, you know, take the, you know, the best of whatever mics to make that big ass sound. Cause it always sounds better to me that way. I don't, I mean, but that's obviously that's, you know, I mean, you're younger, but I always feel like it's an old man's opinion, um, to have to no. like that kind of sound, but no, I, I'm, you know, 20 years younger than you. And, and, and even I, you know, as an album listener, as a song on the radio, you know, if you want it loud, I mean, let the compression of the radio station do it for you, for fuck's yeah. sake. I mean, yeah. it, it has to be compressed because radio is compressed. But, like, the the thing I have is that I want to see a return to the late 80s, early 90s Bob Rock style production of everyone in a big room. You know, yeah. the Dr. Feel Good, the Black Album, Sonic Temple, all these huge sounding albums that, yeah. you know, it, it, I know they're both 80s albums, as an example of, of like good and bad. Listen to Animalize by Kiss and then listen to um, Dr. Feel Good. It's night and day because Animalize is a, is a mushy sounding 80s album yeah. and um, Dr. Feel Good holds its own to this day because it still yeah. sounds fantastic you know and i think part of that is you see the footage in the black album recording sessions that they're doing the mm -hmm. drums in this big room that like everybody can sit in um yeah. and <clears throat> i don't know but, but you know ba it. basically back to these is like that they have that sound where it just feels huge and yeah. it help, really helps these songs shine um especially on dehumanizer which we're now on um mm -hmm. so computer god got two checks for me i love that one yeah that, something you're going to notice with this album is that at least half of it if not over half was double checked by me <laughs> um, so it's so computer god yeah yeah computer god's fucking fantastic um yeah. the chorus to it is incredible um mm-hmm I mean, I was listening to it in the car, and I just thought to myself, God, this way to technical paradise. Like all of these awesome lines in there. And I love the I love the vibe of the album, you know? And it's almost like <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's Wayne's World that caused this, but I have this Terminator 2 association with the album because A you know, it came out in the early 90s, not long after Terminator 2. Yeah. Time Machine is in the Wayne's World scene with the T-1000 in it, looking yeah. for John Connor. You know, have you seen this boy? Mm -hmm. ah! You know, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, there's a fucking skeleton robot Terminator looking dude electrocuting a guy on the front cover. It's like, 
part of me does wonder if they were like, oh, that Terminator 2 film was fucking cool, wasn't it? Let's make yeah. our album look like that. Um, no doubt in my mind. Um, so, yeah. This so is... Computer yeah, God, is computer computer God, God. Is, in, is in the actual playing field. Mm. Um, af- after all, the dead... Um, got hey. one check, got one check for me. Mm-hmm. So yep. uh, how do you, how do you feel about that one? That one was one I was like, eh, I could take or leave that one in context of the rest of the album. Um, okay. But, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, TV crime's got two checks for me. TV crime has two checks for me. TV Fucking awesome song. <laughs> crimes. Um, I, I remember seeing the music video for that on headbangers ball when i you know in 92 and just being like this is fucking black sabbath this is awesome because like (laughs) because because i mean i i was into black sabbath but at at that point i owned two black sabbath albums i owned we sold our soul for rock and roll and i owned uh headless cross those were the two Mm -hmm. that i had and i loved both of them but just for some reason, so I, I don't think I, at that point, I had ever even heard Dio Black Sabbath um, as ah. a you know 13 year old kid or whatever. Um, so I hearing that song, I was just like, man, this is fucking great. Um, yeah. So yeah, TV Crimes is a, is a big one for me. It's quite All a right. thrashy one too, isn't it? Like, yes, borderline, borderline thrash song. Well, it, I mean, so there was this thing that I feel like the you know, metal bands got such a kick in the ass from i think it was really from thrash metal i think thrash metal really because it all mm-hmm. starts with like you know 1990 judas priest painkiller like that yeah like they were very inspired to be heavier and more metal and then you you get a couple of years later you have this album and then you if you think about the first single that came from fear of the dark mm. um that was be quick or be dead you know, it's like it's like these. I feel like these bands all were like, "Oh yeah, we can we can do a you know a energetic, aggressive, fast things, and you know be metal." Yeah. And so I feel like you know that was the, that was the best thing because this was before obviously people were more interested in grunge and stuff. Because even in '92, you know, as as much as people like to do the revisionist history of like overnight all these bands went bankrupt, uh, yeah. but no, in '92 we were all. You know, a lot of us were still listening to metal. Um, I was listening to metal well into the, you know, to up, up until probably 95 when, you know, I started to find other things that were not metal. But, mm. every, yeah, I always got to remind everybody, I'm like, hey, Far Beyond Driven came out in 94. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it irritates me when you see these, like, fucking articles that are like, uh, why metal died in the 90s. Fucking didn't. Pantera is living proof of that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just lost its popularity, and, and but it didn't happen overnight. And you know, think, you know, we've talked about this before. It was like, certain parts of metal and hard rock were basically killing themselves off anyway. Yeah. So, I'm I'm now realizing living proof might have, might have been a poor choice of words. Um, but uh, yeah, for 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 what what did, what, what did you for, say? Living for, proof for, for for Pantera. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That, that being said, yeah, def- definitely, definitely uh, 90s metal is is probably my favorite at this point, you know, yeah, especially the the first half. You know? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's what a lot of my favorite metal, too, is the first half of the 90s. Um, but, you know, I think that that, you know, we, we've we've progressed in the world of the internet to now like everybody thinks that they're they need to put their two cents in and a lot of times they're summarizing something that they read in an article i saw the other day somebody was talking about uh uh jason newstead and they said you know he he was so great in metallica it's too bad the band treated him like shit and i'm like where did you where did you read that like because they sure they fucked with him in the beginning but it was all like practical jokes and Mm. then they were like fucking family for many many years and then they grew all they all were fucking growing apart jason was just the one that was just like nah fuck this and he's come out he's he's done interviews since then saying yeah they nobody was mean you know and so and so it's so funny that people just 
take these things and then their brain makes a simplified version of it and then they spit those things out and i'm like i think that's the biggest problem with the world is that nobody seems to understand that there's a lot of gray area and a lot of things yeah. and most of the time you don't know a lot about it <laughs> you're just <laughs> trying to make the shortest thing that you can because that's what the world is all about now it's about a 30 second video or a headline that leads you into an article that doesn't say anything it just has a bunch of yeah. ads in it you know so at the, end, at, the, at the end of the day none of us are going to know like the the dirty specific things that were said but all we know is he fucking left the band <laughs> Uh, exclamation oh point <laughs> okay i love that lars made it into here uh, yeah <laughs> to uh to the black sabbath slashed and mashed okay let's move on um <laughs> my, my my first x is letters from earth this is one i kept because it's like it's got that cool part where it's like letters from earth part and then like later in the song it kicks off and goes into one of the like a, a classic black sabbath oh fuck we're going faster now yeah. thing where the tempo shifts and i always love when they do that um yeah it wasn't enough for me to keep it but you know um fair so enough what, dude was, was it would it would it be a double check for you or just a one check yeah, it's a one check from me I mean, we'll still yeah. leave it there uh master of insanity also got an x for me that i don't mind losing that one yeah yeah it's a good song but it's um not strong enough to compete on on this level okay we'll, we'll go ahead and get rid of master of insanity time machine got a double check for me even though i prefer the version on the wayne's world soundtrack but i like this uh, one too i was going to make this argument and i feel like because it's our show and we can do whatever the hell we want um this is a double check it is time machine and it we are going with the wayne's world version oh okay let's just fucking do it if we both prefer that one we might as well it's the same song but done a way we prefer so for those of you um who don't know when we do these slashed and mashed we end up putting together playlists uh mine is on apple music and uh eddie's is on spotify and we put together our thing so um at the bottom in the description of the video, excuse me, um, there is a, uh, there'll be a link to both of them. So you can go listen to whatever we name our compilation. But um, I like that. I like that we, we play by our own rules and we are going to use did. the Wayne's World soundtrack version of Time Machine. So uh, bam, it stays on. Um, Sins of the Father got an X from me. I don't, uh, don't need that one. Now, I have a question. When you heard this, what band did it make you think of? I mean, right off hand. Father. It, it didn't, I mean, maybe you need to say it. Because <laughs> I, 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 was, I was thinking to myself, this song would be right at home on Bad Motorfinger. I, I oh, was, I, yeah, it, that, I mean. That intro, like, sounds ripped straight from, um, what's it called? What's that song called? Um... Ah, oh, fuck! I'm gonna need to look it up real quick. Bear with, bear with. How did? What, uh, how does it? How does it go? The song you're talking about? It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things where I, I don't want to. I, I'm gonna get it wrong, so I need to like actually <laughs> physically see the album cover and the and God, where the fuck? Ah, uh, yeah, you, but I mean, I, I, I would say that there's, there's a lot of Sabbathiness in uh, Soundgarden already, so. Uh, Oh, is it searching with my good eye closed? Yeah. Oh, like, that would make it? sense. Let me just have a quick listen. I just want to. I want, I want to double check. See how close they are. Here's where Eddie is listening. To you know yeah. that part. Yeah. 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 That part. I was just thinking to myself. That's probably that's probably why it didn't connect with me because I was all like, "Is it a main riff or what? What is it?" <laughs> but uh, you're not wrong. That's probably new. I you know, that that's like a compliment for Soundgarden right there. I love Soundgarden, but you know, if we yeah. told them, you know, this reminds us of Soundgarden, they'd be like, "Fuck yeah!" Um, <laughs> do you want to keep Sins of the Father? Is the is the real question? I like it, but not enough to stay. <laughs> That's all I need to know. That one's getting crossed out. 
Okay, so this is to me the too late is one of two songs where I I, I had run out of double check. I tried to do ten double checks. Hmm. Or did I do ten double checks? Yeah. So I I I didn't I didn't I I had to choose because I love I think too late's great, but it ended hmm. up getting a single check because of a song that comes later. So what do you how do you feel about too late? Too late's one I can kind of take or leave, but the next two coming up are as far as I'm concerned, one of them has to make it. Okay, well, in the, for, for that, I it, it to me is the worst song on the album. I don't really. I'm not really into it. Buried Alive is fucking great. That's hey, double check. Pound it down. <laughs> yes. So too Underrated late. It is fuck. We'll yeah. leave to we'll leave a, a I on there because you liked it as well. But we will move move Buried Alive. Over here. That riff. Yeah, it's that's like it's almost fun. dime bag levels of chunky. It's, it, the, yeah, it's really good. Um, so at the in the end of things on round one, the songs that are staying on our compilation or right now, Die Young, Turn Up the Night, Slipping Away, Computer God, TV Crimes, Time Machine, Wayne's World Edition, and Buried Alive. Mm-hmm. So now we got to go through. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 songs still to talk through. Okay. Um, and we and and these are the songs that are over here don't have to stay. But I think because we agreed on both of them, yeah. Let's just these these stay. So that means we only have three slots. Shit. Okay. Three, three more songs. Now we only have one song from Heaven and Hell. And so out of the three that we have left, Children of the Sea, Lady Evil, and Heaven and Hell, if we had if we choose if we choose or chose one, I would go with Heaven and Hell. I too um am, am thinking that, yeah. I feel like you can't have a Dio Sabbath album without heaven and hell. It just, well, it wouldn't sit right. I mean, know? I feel, I feel the same way about mob rules, honestly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, All these damn title tracks complicating things. <laughs> yeah. Good thing. There's not a dehumanizer title track. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, that's, that's two songs left. I'm going to go ahead and cross out Children of the Sea and Lady Evil because I feel like that's our yeah. least that's our least favorite album. We need to spend more time with, with the Mobiles. other two. Yeah. So uh so we've got you know two from that album, two from Mob Rules, but we've got four from Dehumanizer. Mm-hmm. So Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, so we we can pick two more. At least one of them's got to be from Mob Rules. So I'm I'm actually all for being quite Mob Rules dehumanizer heavy, like because because those two are stronger albums have the same lineup. You know, not to discredit Bill Ward. I think he's a fantastic drummer, but I think the the lineup of mob rules and dehumanizer is just chef's kiss. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, my hot take would be, I actually prefer Vinny Apice over Bill Ward. Yeah. Um, even though Bill Ward in his, like... in his prime was fucking great, you know, but yeah, there's uh there's certain drummers. We've talked about it before that they, there's a, it's them. there's a looseness to the way they play. Mm. And I just, and it feels so good. And I, and Vinny Apice is like that. My uh, uncle, who I've brought up several times on on this show, uh, he described Vinny's playing as literally just getting there in time, like, but in a good way, like, yeah, purposely, he's a little, like, he's a little bit, like, a little bit behind the beat, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 
upon a bomb in West the Wonder sort of thing. Yeah. There's a there's a few there's a few drummers that have that that style and I've always mm. really liked that. And I think it's probably because I I just have a it, it's a, it's pleasing to me to hear something that sounds organic. And yeah. so when things are just so like on the nose and robotic, that works for some music, but for music like the stuff that Sabbath makes I really think that, yeah, that it's uh, it works to have that drummer that's he almost feels like he's involved in the in the motion of the music a lot more and not just keeping time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, <laughs> on to that though. Voodoo, sign of the Southern Cross, mob rules, falling off the edge of the world, and over and over are what's left here. The only two that got double checks for me are mob rules and over and over but I also love falling off the edge of the world. So, um, <laughs> where do we, go, where do we go from here? I'll give you mob rules. If we can keep sign of the Southern cross. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, so or are we going to, over and over. Yeah, oh, oh it, whoa, it, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on there, yeah. buddy. Over and over is, I, is fucking amazing. Yeah. Is that what we're doing? Because we just literally well, wrapped, we just, we just wrapped the whole thing up. Well, I'm, that, I'm just thinking, let, let's, for the sake of being thorough, let's, let's go in. Let's go in. So out, out, out of those two, though, that you mentioned, mob rules and over and over, which one would you put on first? Which is what, what would be your number one out of those two? You know, since you brought up the guitar solo in over and over, I've I don't know if I've ever given that a fair listen. Dude, you know? just we will just wait. Go just go to find it. It's okay. it happens later on in the song. I don't remember exactly what what part, but it is it's tasty. This is going to be one of those shit. like epiphanies caught on tape. Oh, I hope. I hope so. Yeah. Help, or you'll, or you'll just look at me and you'll be like, eh, it's kind of, it's kind of stalked to my ears, man. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So okay. here we I'm go. Gonna a, gonna do like. Okay. So, Eddie Sparks, especially on the uh, on the podcast side of things, is it Eddie Sparks? Like two, is, two minutes in, like that sort of. Yeah, at, at, at least, how long is the song? It's in. It's close to the end. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I went to a section that's that's guitar solo. You know what? The next three minutes or so. <laughs> that's fine. I'll I'll talk to people out there. You listen to the song. Okay. So so this is a this is an occasion where I, I'm I'm hoping Eddie will be on my side with this. But I love that guitar solo so much. But I love those kind of guitar solos where it's you just feel the emotion coming out of the the solo not just in the notes that are being played but in how they're being played and there i feel like there are so many great guitar players but there are very few that that bring the emotion across and i you know tony iomi is one of those um i would put uh ty Tabor from king's x in that list as well um there's there are several but like you know you can do you can do weedly weedlies all day long um but can you make me feel something that's 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 really what it comes down to and uh tony iomi what a you know who, you know preaching to the choir, uh, choir I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody is a tony iomi fan who isn't who isn't um i can hear i can hear the solo play in his headphones <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, and, shit. I'm, and i'm like oh man no you don't have to turn it down i just stopped talking and so i was like oh, oh that's, no this I was just thinking for like a content ID. Yeah, fuck it. Okay. They, they right, keep, keep going. They keep they keep uh, telling me that our videos are inappropriate. Um, I, oh, I think really? I, I think it's because in the last episode we, we were talking about chopping off tits and stuff. So it's gonna do it again. <laughs> it's gonna catch that <laughs> phrase. It's gonna be like, this is inappropriate <laughs> for our advertisers. I'm like, oh, dude. I don't know. I've seen some of the other shit and some of the advertisers on here. So, uh, really? Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, over and over, classic song. If you, if you guys, um, uh, you know, I would say 
when you're done with this episode, go listen to the compilation we put together. But I would say immediately just listen to Mob Rules from front to back because it is a fucking killer. And then Dehumanizer because it's also good. But I just, you know, I think Mob Rules is, is a pretty perfect album, really. And um, probably the best thing Dio ever sang on, in my opinion. I know there are people that they love, you know, they love the rainbow. They love the the Dio solo stuff or whatever. But, you know, I know something about something about Mob Rules. It's just uh, checks all the boxes for me. Yeah, that was fucking tasty. <laughs> so, all right. So, so now, how do you feel about about keep keeping that track on there? Do you think? Do you agree with me that it's good enough? Just even that solo, because I love the whole song. But yeah, yeah, that is a that's a majestic solo. Yeah. Um, just to just for the sake of highlighting his playing as well, like he's not a shredder, but he's doing some ripping stuff in there. You know yeah and some and some emotion in that too so i'm gonna put over and over nice so we've got one more slot oh Um, okay so um i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna say as much as much as is since this is you know old head eddie sparks we've got four songs from dehumanizer we should have also four from old head's favorite one Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna let you pick this last one for of the remaining voodoo sign of the southern cross mob rules falling off the edge of the world which one would you choose i'm going off of sheer majesty and might i gotta go sign of the southern cross okay to this to this day when that song kicks in gives me chills like the the goosebumps right up my arms so i'm like oh you know the fade away fade away yeah, I mean it's it's a I'm, don't get don't get me wrong. I, I, I love every song on this album, so I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not sad at all. Um, but I love my I mob I love mob rules a lot. So listen to our. Um, I said it earlier while you were listening to that. I said listen to our compilation and just go listen to mob rules all the way through. <laughs> well, now comes the uh, the question of sequencing how are we gonna... so yeah so we've got die young turn up the night slipping away computer god tv crimes time machine buried alive heaven and hell over and over and sign of the southern cross so hold on let me let, let's do obviously we need to start with turn up the night right it's just it's an amazing yeah, opener absolutely that that so kicks the turn... door down Turn my headphones up. Um, turn up the night. And so, because we're dealing with... Turn on with... my wife. <laughs> <laughs> turn on my wife! <laughs> um, but since we only have... Is it just two songs from Heaven and Hell? Die Young and Heaven and Hell? Yeah. Um, since, since we do that, then let's do the second song, Be From Dehumanizer, to kind of like, you know... Um, yeah. But but where would we go? If, do we? Because TV crimes is fast. I feel like we don't want to go from fast to fast. Yeah. So you burn burn up all your speed. So do you think Computer God should just be number two? Yeah, I think that's a good do do like kind of a sad but true thing. Follow it up with a Groover. Yeah. Com- cool. So we got Computer God. Computer God, nice. And at this point, I guess this is when we should do a a uh, Heaven and Hell one. But I don't think we should do Heaven and Hell right after Computer God. So maybe Die Young should go after. Computer I'm not sure. God. I reckon. I reckon we wait. It, are we treating this like a like a side A side B sort of situation? I, I would. I'd like to five and five kind of thing. Yeah, I might do. I might do that because I've I've got, I'm laying it out here right now. Got uh, side A and B. All right. Well then. Well let's 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 approach it that way. Before we move anywhere else, let's move to side B. What would what would a good side B opener be? It doesn't have I to think, be fast. I think time machine. Time machine is is a good 
I, it kicks off side B of dehumanizer, so I feel like it's a natural spot for it. I'm 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 cool with that. So we'll put time machine as the beginning of side B. The Wayne's World edition of of time machine. Dude, I'm thinking track three might might be slipping away. I think that's a good third track. Oh fuck yeah that yeah that's good. We know what we're doing, people. Slipping we're away, yeah. So, um, slipping away, all right. We still, we still got to put a, um, a heaven and hell on side A. And honestly, we could do one of two things. Like, Die Young would go great after slipping away, but heaven and hell closing out the side seems yeah. pretty awesome. You you want to just double down on heaven and hell at the end of side A, so you got die young and heaven and hell. Well, we don't have to do that. I'm just saying we could we could do. Ooh, I've had an idea. Maybe I don't know. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I've had an idea. Maybe I don't want you know either side to be bogged down with like a massive tempo drop because we've got quite a few slow ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of saving TV crime for. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. To be fair, um, I definitely think Sign of the Southern Cross would be a good side B closer, like, and have. Oh, I don't know actually. So why why don't we do just so we have representation for heaven and hell on both sides? Why don't we follow slipping away with TV crimes and then wrap it up with heaven and hell on side A? Okay, yep, TV, crimes, heaven, and hell. Kick it off with Time Machine on side B. Yep, yep. So, now I feel like I want to listen to Buried Alive again real quick, because I, I want to, I like... It's... it's slower but not as slow as the likes of sign of the southern cross it's so do you chunky. do you think do you think that would be a good i feel like that might we might want to do either buried alive you said you wanted to do sign of the southern cross as the closer yeah hmm. i'm actually fine with time machine with with, uh, with buried alive yeah can do buried a lot actually i've had a thought maybe over and over between time machine and buried alive that way you get kind of a tender ballad -y okay. sort of thing I i'm i'm down with that two heavy boys nice over and over followed by buried alive which leaves die young uh and Sign of the Southern Cross, and I which think works. Sign of the... Die young, and then Sign of the Southern Cross. Awesome. That's a pretty fucking strong collection of songs. <laughs> Sign of the Southern Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I mean, to be fair, I'm writing mine out, and mine looks like Sai on to Southish Cruise. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that there it is. Nobody has to read my writing but me. Um, so yeah, so the track listing of uh, we, we, we're not done, though, because we have the hardest part coming for us. So the track listing is side A, turn up the night, computer God, slipping away, TV crimes, heaven and hell. Side B, time machine, over and over, buried alive, die young, and sign of the Southern Cross. Pretty fucking Fuck. good. So the question <laughs> is... What That's are we gonna what are we sentence. gonna call it? What are we gonna yeah. call it? So the, the one that came to mind for me that's cheesy as fuck, because when I was doing all the my shit, it was so heavy on the mob rules. I was like, we should just call it Dio rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, but I don't uh, but I don't know, but I mean but we can <laughs> we can discuss it. But that was the first thing that came to my head. I was like, that's so cheesy. But also really on point when you think about it. <laughs> uh, the only other thing I can think of is is deomanizer. 
Uh, but that's that feels like a much more cranked and ranked style title, Dio Manizer. Oh, uh, no, nah, I've, I've had an idea. Okay, right. Dio Manizer. Dio rules. Like in brackets next to it, just just to play on the cranked and ranked joke. Okay. Yeah. So how do, how are we spelling D D O Manizer? Because <laughs> <laughs> it almost sounds like Demonizer too, which which D O D. It looks funny written out. D O Manizer. <laughs> um. And then in parentheses, Dio rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude. That was easier than I thought. Oh, I love it. So that's, that's a, a so if you go if you go to the to the links underneath the video or wherever, you'll uh, see the links to the Spotify and the Apple Music versions of these. Then they'll be under the name. Deomanizer um brackets do rules or parentheses or whatever you know those things man that was i feel like we did some good like and i and i'm very proud of us for not because i thought for a second i was like maybe i'll just suggest that this will be 12 tracks but i'm proud that we that we both didn't do that um, yeah because it's a cop out. Because at the end of the day, you can go listen to whatever you want to listen to. This is uh, this is the, <laughs> the about the process of us putting together this Dio best of, according to uh, Cranked and Ranked. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, uh, nothing. I just I, I just love Diomanizer. <laughs> Diomanizer. I mean, really, it's perfect. So you know, even without the Dio rules part, it's still a. Uh, it's still great. Yeah, that is a really good, a really good uh, comp. Really, it's like this is a good if if, if it's your if if you're the to the beginning and you're in the beginning words. I'm glad we're almost done because I don't know what happened in my brain. Um, <laughs> if you're if you're new to the you know Dio Sabbath world, you know, check this out. Um, and then uh, this is a pretty pretty damn good intro to it. Yeah. The interesting yeah. thing though is that the the so- the songwriting style and even the production styles are they're good, you know, they they differ a little bit, but they're so close that this will probably mm. just feel like a cohesive album anyway. So it's kind of cool. Now, you know what? Now I'm curious. You what did you say the compilation was called that they put out? Is it called the Dio Years? Y- yeah, I, b- I believe. Let's have a let's have a look. Uh Black Sabbath, the Dio years. Okay, so this came out in 2007. Let's see how this differs from ours. There's a 16 songs. Oh, well, they cheated. They have new songs on theirs. <laughs> oh, they have, they, have, they have Heaven and Hell songs. Maybe we should address that. We didn't include the Heaven and Hell album uh, just simply because they didn't title it Black Sabbath. So, yeah. you know. Um. All right, so they you they went with Neon Nights, but they also included Turn Up the Night. Th- they included Lady Evil, Heaven mm-hmm. and Hell, which we did, Die Young, which we did, Lonely is the Word, we did not. They just put the fir- wait, hold on, hold on. They, there's only three tracks from Dehumanizer on here, and they and they include they. Didn't include computer guy. They included I and not computer guy. This is, I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit on this. Don't listen to this compilation. Whoever put this together um, is. They uh, did it wrong. They did it wrong. (laughs) First off, it's too long. They included things from heaven and hell. Just, you know, make it, make it. Why not make a special edition of the heaven and hell album and put those extra songs on that? Um, Yeah, I'm I'm not. uh, I'm not interested in this. Although they didn't, they, they, they didn't, they did include mob rules. I'll give them that. But why would, why would they not? It's the name of the fucking album. All right. So yeah, it was okay. So it was supposed to be a box set. Um, do, 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 sorry guys. Do, I'm do, reading do. right now. <laughs> it doesn't really say who, who put it together 
I'm assuming the band had some kind of uh, a say in what songs were chosen. Um, and that's yeah. another thing. That's another thing that's really interesting is that I it would be interesting to have each member of Black Sabbath. Obviously, um, Dio can't do it. But if they each put together their own ten song compilation, like what ones do they think are the best songs on those albums? Like that is that's the kind of thing that would be fascinating to me. I would love it if you know i don't know let's say metallica they put out like a four lp set and each one is each member of the band makes his eight to ten song metallica greatest hits so it's each everybody's opinion on like what what are what do i think and i would buy that shit even though i already own all those songs i would just be like oh this is rob's this is rob's top 10 Metallica songs. I think I, I that's <laughs> fascinating to me because they're the people that fucking made them. Well, Rob didn't. Rob made, you know, a handful of, you know, songs, but, you know, still. Anyway, um, that's. Yeah. That's yeah. The, <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's the, I can't talk. I can't handle a pen anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's it. We've, 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 uh, we've wrapped up. Our compilation, Diomanizer, and uh, or Dio rules, front in uh, parentheses, and I hope you all enjoyed this. It's, uh, I think some people do, and obviously, you know, as as always, this is a conversation. Um, our Absolutely. compilation is not the correct one. Well, it's for us, but <laughs> if you could put together your own ten song Dio album. Put it or Dio Sabbath album. Put it in the comments what your ten songs would be, and um, yeah, that's that's really it. Did we like you know did these episodes end with a with a very sort of like yeah kind of feeling? <laughs> I was that's something I say and I stole I stole it from Eddie Izzard because he, he there's one of his stand up things where he says uh, he, he that's how he wraps up the thing. He's like I like to end my shows with a very eh feeling. <laughs> anyway so uh, that's great all right so that's it do you have anything uh any parting words for everybody out there uh, you spoken like a, a true wordsmith right there <laughs> <laughs> um so th- that's it for for slashed and mashed dio sabbath and yes. um our next undertaking for Cranked and Ranked is a big one for me, it at is. least. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with everybody out here and Eddie Sparks. I have not done any work on it whatsoever. So <laughs> that being said, we may have a week break from okay. episodes because it's a band that not only has a lot of albums, but I've never listened. Well, no, I've listened to two of their albums all the way through one time Hmm. and that's it they're one of their earliest and their most recent are the two that i've listened to so um other than that it's just random songs so i have a lot of work cut out for me Mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see how it goes this is for those of you who remember the Toto episode, this is going to be one where I'm leading the charge for a change. So, uh, yeah. Although I, I do have a feeling that it will be the opposite of Toto, where I go into this and I come out of it not impressed at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, How that, that, that tends to make good episodes of stuff, though. So we'll see. We'll see, though. Maybe we'll, you know, because like I liked Toto enough where I immediately went and got an old school copy of their first album because I was just like, this is a fucking banger. Um, so hmm. maybe this band will have that album for me as well. I'm not going to, that's not even fucking, you could, they're not, we're not even a hint. Um, all you need to know is it is a band that I don't really like from what I've heard and hmm. um, Eddie loves and they have a lot of albums. So we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> all right. So that is the end of uh, this episode of Slashed and Mashed. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Peanut butter platypus to all of you. You all fucking rule. And we will see you uh, fa- fairly soon with an- another episode. And as we normally do, I'm going to throw it over 
to Mr. Eddie Sparks, my blood brother, because we're both from Cornwall now. Um, <laughs> <and he's, laughs> we're blood brothers. That's what, was, that's what was in my head the whole night. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, I'm throwing it over to Eddie Sparks to take us out. Look out! The sky is falling down! Look out! And I read later to yeah. <laughs> That fucking sounded pretty fucking hurts. good. That sounded good. Yeah, thank you. Look out! <laughs> <laughs> There's a rainbow! Look out! That's like every every Dio ad lib ever. Just look out. There's a rainbow. You know. <laughs> All right. Later. I'm dude. the leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs>